What's up guys, welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So at this point, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the in-game news previewing the upcoming Dual Dokkan Fest between the AGL PyCon and the Tech Janemba. So in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick uh, breakdown of everything related to these new units from their animations to their you know kits their banners their new categories and so on and so forth to help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned dragon stones to try to summon for them once they drop with the next celebration okay so with all that said let's just jump right into it and uh, here's a quick look at the jp banners when they came out a couple months ago but uh, you know what before we take a look at the banners let's actually jump over to the official doke on twitter page here and watch their animations together. Okay, so I think this is for Janemba. Let me just turn up the volume a little bit. And here we go. All right, so there you go. Those are the uh, Tech Janemba's animations. This is, of course, the Fat Janemba, and then he has his active skill transformation into Super Janemba. And overall, I think his animations look really clean. Um, I'm not gonna lie though, yo, as much as I love Janemba, the transformation man always grosses me out just a little bit. It's just, I don't know, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable, you know? But uh, regardless, yeah, great looking animations. Um, I really like the like attack that uh, the Fat Janemba has, and you know Super Janemba is Super Janemba. I think he is one of the best designed villains in the entire franchise. I just love how he looks, and his attacks are pretty dope too. So um, yeah, man. I mean, overall a big fan of Janemba. Good looking animations. Not uh, I would say like top five or anything like that, but top ten for sure. So that's your number. Let's move on to the PyCon here. And even though you know PyCon himself is pretty cool, I think the reason that most people were excited for PyCon when he first got announced or first got revealed was the fact that his partner super attack or unit super attack included Gogeta, right? So in my mind, even though it is PyCon, this is much more of a Gogeta card. So this is going to be one of those situations where. I'm probably going to be summoning for a unit more for their animations than their actual performance. Even though PyCon's not like, you know, terrible by any means. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So here are the animations for PyCon slash Gogeta. Man, that, that unit super attack is so dope. Um, probably my favorite one in the game so far. I mean, we have some pretty nice partner super attacks like the Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta and Super Saiyan 3 Goku one, right? Like, that's awesome, but I definitely, I definitely think this is the best unit super attack we've seen so far. And uh, a big part of it is probably because I'm such a big Gogeta fanboy. And anything with Gogeta in it, I just, 
I just gotta have, you know? So, uh, yeah, there's the PyCon animations. We saw Janemba, we saw PyCon. You guys know what they're gonna look like. So now let's pop over to their banners and uh, do a quick overview of what global players can expect to see. And uh, in terms of any changes from global to JP, there could be, there could be, but I don't really see it happening. And also when it comes to the featured units here, none of them have really been featured too often in the recent past. So there's not really like a huge reason or incentive to, you know, swap them out for other units, right? So uh, here is the PyCon banner. Of course, we have the new AGL PyCon. And we also have uh, some other highlights here. The STR Gogeta from the fifth anniversary Dual Dokkan Fest that transforms into, of course, Blue Gogeta, which you guys can see right there. And even though recently he's been getting some slander, some hate from people in the community for not totally unjustified reasons, um, the main thing with him and the Vegito Blue, honestly, is the lack of defense before they transform, and even after they transform, it takes them a while to build up that defense, and even when maxed out, their defense is not like super impressive. So I think that's kind of the main reason why some people have kind of soured, or their opinions have kind of, you know, fallen for these characters. But uh, I gotta say, man, I think Blue Gogeta and the Vegito Blue are still amazing units. But uh, they do have a few flaws, right? But nonetheless, yo, they're still pretty new. A lot of people are still missing them. You know, people that got shafted from the anniversary or started the game after the anniversary was over. This guy will be available on the PyCon banner. And uh, obviously, we have Dragon Ball Super units, the Broly and the Gogeta, still two top tier TURs in the game. Uh, this guy is, uh, you know, he has problems. His defense is horrible, but still a very good support and then we have the third anniversary Gogeta and uh, this dude has aged surprisingly well you know he's almost three years old on global over three years old on JP and his damage and his uh, defense are still very good and then finally we have the STR Super Gogeta I do wish that they replaced him with the Int Super Gogeta who is objectively better but uh, with the Extreme Z Awakening, this guy is still, you know, a solid unit, right? So that's the PyCon banner right there. Quickly popping over to the Vegito banner. It is, uh, you know, similar except kind of the other side of things for like the Dual Dokkan Fest. And then we have the uh, Zamasu and Trunks, which was their own Dual Dokkan Fest. So um, let's see, we got the new Janemba, of course. We have the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. And uh, we also have the STR, or sorry, the Tech Vegito Blue from the 5th anniversary. And then Zamasu and Trunks are both two very, very good uh, TURs. The Trunks is still so useful in those longer events where you can stack some defense. And then, uh, you know, Goku Black is, uh, he's definitely not completely useless. He does stack a lot of defense, but... Uh, yeah, he's just not the most impressive unit overall, I guess. Like, he transforms into Rosé, which is amazing. The animations are top tier, but it's so hard to get that Rosé transformation that you almost never see it. So that kind of sucks. Um, and then we have the, of course, Vegito, who is still very, very good, especially when you get that transformation. If you have the STR Vegito, the two paired together, when they both transform, is just... It's got to be one of the best rotations in the entire game, if not the best rotation in terms of damage, you know? And then we have the Int Janemba. Once again, you know, the updated one would have been better if they gave us STR Janemba, but we should be getting the STR Janemba Extreme Z Battle and Extreme Z Awakening for this upcoming celebration, so it kind of makes sense that they don't give us, you know, the new EZA unit on a Dokkan Fest banner like this, right? So that's the banner for uh, Janemba. Uh, of course, this guy is relatively new, as well as the Boo from the uh, PyCon banner, and they're both quite good in their own ways. I mean, neither of them, I think, are like top five or anything like that, but they're both good, for sure. And uh, if I were to rate these banners, man, I mean, with two Dokkan Fest exclusives, or rather two Dokkan Fest exclusive LRs, as well as other top tier Dokkan Fest, like these guys, this guy, um, of course, these two, this guy, I would give them like a solid 8 out of 10 each, you know, like I think they're pretty even, 
Uh, I would say that the... I would say that the Janemba banner is slightly better. Not by a ton, but um, if I were to summon on one of them, I would probably say... Yeah, the Janemba banner is a little bit more worth your stones. That's just my opinion, of course. And uh, they both get an 8 out of 10. They're both dual Dokkan Fest banners. Another thing to consider is that there will be Dokkan Fest tickets for both banners, which will give us a lot more free summons on top of the 3 plus 1 discounts for the first, like, two weeks or something like that. So, um, yeah, because they're dual Dokkan Fest banners, because the featured units, as you can see, are very good, uh, I would say the value on these banners are quite high. Okay, quite good value for your stones. But of course, there are going to be better Tool Token Fest banners coming in the next three to four months in the form of the 6th Anniversary banners, which is also something you need to consider. The 6th Anniversary banners should also have discounts, should also have Dokkan Festival tickets, and all the stuff that these Dual Dokkan Fest banners will come with, with better new units and just better overall featured pools. So um, even though these banners, I gotta admit, are tempting. You know, they're very tempting. They're good value. They kind of pale in comparison, in my opinion, to what you can get with the 6th Anniversary banners. And of course, as always, you know, how good these banners really are depend on your personal box, right? So if you have a lot of these units already, then it's not going to be as good. If you don't have a lot of these units, then these banners will be very good. So yeah, there's the PyCon and Janemba banners. Now let's move on to the units themselves and what they look like. Okay, so starting with the PyCon here, his leader skill is Connected Hope's new category. Category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170%, or super class key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 130%. Now, uh, one thing I do really love about PyCon and Janemba is that they're both very versatile leaders. You know, like for PyCon, if you wanted to completely ignore this Connected Hopes category, which we'll take a look at in a second, um, you can still run a all super type team. You can run any super type unit you want under his leader skill, which is really nice. And then for Janemba, same thing for Extreme Class. Um, honestly, I think both categories are just not the best, right? Like they're both pretty small categories and by far not the worst we've seen, but definitely not anywhere close to the best either. So uh, the versatility is one thing I do really like about both their leader skills. And from there, for uh, PyCon, he has two different super attacks. There's the normal one and also the unit super attack. So for the normal super attack, he greatly raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage and greatly lowers enemy's attack. And then for the unit super attack, he greatly raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage, and then attacks become effective to all types, which is of course the Gogeta staple, and greatly lowers attack. And it can be activated when there is an ally whose name includes Goku Angel or Vegeta Angel attacking in the same turn. His passive is attack and defense plus 150%, super class allies key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30% with 3 or more type key spheres obtained, plus an additional key plus 4, high chance of evading enemies attacks including super attacks, and seals the attacked enemy super attack with a rainbow key sphere obtained, which obviously is not that hard to get. And then active skill is delays target enemy's attack for one turn, which is essentially like a ghost usher, can be activated when facing only one enemy whose HP is 50% or more, starting from the fourth turn from start of battle once only. And links are Supreme Warrior, Gentleman, uh, Experienced Fighters, Shocking Speed, Cold Judgment, Otherworld Warriors, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Movie Heroes, Worthy Rivals, Otherworld Warriors, Saviors, Battle of Wits, and Connected Hopes. So that is everything you gotta know about this uh, PyCon right here. Um, I think he's good. I think he's a good unit. Do I think he's amazing? Not really. From what I've seen, his damage is solid, but doesn't really blow anyone away. Uh, but I do really like the fact that he does have that support for a super class. He also has really good defense, especially if you factored in his high chance of evading enemies' attacks and also sealing. And his active skill is like a free Ghost Usher. So this guy has a lot of utility. If you're looking for big damage numbers, he doesn't really give that to you. But nonetheless, still a very good unit. 
Okay, so before we move on to the number now, let's take a quick look at the um, Connected Hopes category, which consists of characters who represented someone's last hope, apparently. So we got the leader, PyCon. Some highlights here are the Spirit Bomb Absorb Goku, Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta, the Fizz, uh, Goku and Vegeta. Um, you know, some decent options here. You guys can take a look for yourself. But as I said, it's a pretty limited category. You don't have a ton of options, but uh, he does give the new category HP, attack, and defense plus 170% across the board. So that I think kind of makes up for how small the category is right now. So from there, we have the Janemba, and uh, let's start with his leader skill, which is Mind and Body Erosion, category key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%, or Extreme Class key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 130%. Once again, I love the versatility of both leader skills. And then Super Attack raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage to enemy. And passive is attack and defense plus 120%, guards all attacks, extreme class allies key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30% with 4 or more type key spheres. Obtained reduces damage received by 30% with 2 or more rainbow key spheres. Obtained. Okay, so there is a bit of an issue with this passive. Okay, so as you can see, Janemba doesn't get any key unless you get 4 or more type key spheres which uh, if you have an orb changer on the team is not too bad, not too hard, right? You can get it pretty often. But if you don't have an orb changer, then, you know, on turns we are not getting four or more type key spheres, it's actually very difficult to get his super attack off because he doesn't have any key links, okay, before he transforms. As you can see, Innocence, More Than Meets the Eye, Metamorphosis, Master of Magic, Nightmare, Big Bad Bosses, Fierce Battle, a lot of attack links here, which is nice, but no key links whatsoever, even when you max out these links, um, you know, they don't give any key, right? So if you don't get the type key spheres, you don't get this support off, then he's going to start with six key. And uh, he also kind of screws whoever he's linked with because, you know, that unit's also not going to be getting key from uh, links, right? So... Um, I think not giving him something like key plus 2, attack and defense plus 120% without conditions was a bit of a mistake because a lot of people have complained about the fact that it's really hard to get his super attack off pre-transformation. But obviously he does have a lot of other things going for him, like for example, guarding against all attacks is huge for damage reduction purposes. He does also get 30% damage reduction with 2 or more rainbow key spheres obtained, which uh, won't happen every turn, but maybe every other turn you can get that. He also raises defense on a super attack for one turn, which also helps with the defense. So defensively, he is a very, very solid unit. It's just uh, the key is definitely an issue pre-transformation. Uh, speaking of his transformation though, it's an active skill. He transforms when he receives five or more attacks in battle, or he can pop the active skill. You have the option when he receives five or more attacks in battle. Uh, another somewhat problematic feature of this unit, the fact that you can only transform after receiving five or more hits. For the most part, the earliest you can expect to see the uh, transformation become available is turn five or six. Sometimes if you get really unlucky, it could be turn seven, eight, so on and so forth. So I've also heard a lot of complaints about that. I think that because on average you can get, you know, the transformation on like the 5th or 6th turn, it's not horrible, it's really not, uh, it's not the best we've seen by any means, but it's acceptable, I would say. But obviously if you get unlucky, then it could take quite a bit longer, and uh, you know, in certain events you just never see that transformation because you can't get 5 attacks over the course of the um, event, right? So. I think they really need to do away with a condition like this, it's just not ideal. Um, I think turn restriction is the best, obviously like 3-4 to four turns, but yeah, something like this is just really not it, and I really hope they stop giving it to units in the future, but unfortunately, Janemba has it, and uh, it's another thing that kind of counts against him a little bit, you know? But uh, that is the pre-transformed Janemba. Once you transform into Super Janemba, 
His super attack becomes raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage. And passive, attack and defense plus 180%. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to another type of key sphere or to rainbow key spheres, plus an additional attack plus 40% with three or more type key spheres obtained. High chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, with a rainbow key sphere obtained. And he also gets three new links shocking speed, brutal beatdown, and fear and faith. And uh, the addition of these two, fear and faith and shocking speed, are very welcome because. Once again, he has no key spheres, or sorry, no key links before the transformation. And now he at least has these two for a key, right? So, uh, yeah, Super Jinima is very good. Um, defensively and offensively, he's quite impressive. It's just, unfortunately, sometimes it can take quite a while to get into this form, you know? And uh, there's a number for you. I would say he is uh, a unit that can be very good, but if you get unlucky, then... He can also be really disappointing. I'm not a huge fan of his design, but uh, in the right circumstances, once again with some good RNG, uh, he can you know do some very good things for you, both offensively and defensively. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say about him. Uh, before we talk about my recommendations, though, let's quickly take a look at the new Janemba category: Mind and Body Erosion. It consists of characters whose minds and or bodies have been afflicted by conditions such as possession or switching. Interesting. So of course the main leader is the uh, new Janemba. We have uh, the LR Baby, LR Majin Vegeta, Rose, Cooler, and uh, the STR Goku Black. And I think we might have... No, never mind. I was going to say we might have a few more options than the connected hopes category but this one actually might be a little bit smaller um, if I remember correctly so let's go back a little bit uh, yeah it seems like this category as limited as it is uh, actually has a few more options than the Janemba category so like I said before man like I'm not a huge fan of either of these categories they feel kind of like just you know throwaway categories you know just something they made to have a new category for both units and uh you know, maybe they'll get expanded in the future, but probably not significantly. I'll probably be using both of them mainly as super and extreme type leaders, respectively, if I'm being completely honest. So, um, yeah, there you go, guys. Janemba and PyCon. Let's go back to uh, their animations, I guess, as we talk about how I feel about them. I mean, if you watch this entire video, which... I actually went quite a bit longer than I was expecting, so that's my bad, but you can probably get a good idea of how I feel about these two new units and their banners. Um, I don't think either of them are must summons. You know, I don't think either unit is a must have. They're both good TURs, but they're not like top, top tier. They're not must haves by any means. And while their banners are good, once again, they're definitely not as good as the upcoming 6th anniversary banners, and on top of that, there are quite a few older units on these banners, right? Like, for the most part, aside from these three units, and also these three units on the Janemba banner, everybody else is at least, I want to say, two years old, right? At least two years old, some of them are even older, like the uh, three-year LRs are like three years old at this point. Uh, this guy and also the Ingenemba are like four, five years old at this point, even though they've recently been updated with Extreme Z Awakenings in the last couple of years. But um, the point is, like, because they're fairly old now, a lot of people already have them with multiple dupes, if not rainbowed. So in that case, it's kind of, you know, hard to justify summoning on either of these banners too, even though for newer players, they're still very good banners. So... I think my opinion on these banners, my uh, recommendation is unless you really love PyCon or Janemba as characters, like you really, really loved the Fusion Reborn movie and you want to own those moments from the movie and their animations, then these banners are probably a skip. I would have to say that the average person should probably skip this Dual Dokkan Fest. And it's not something that I say a lot for Dual Dokkan Fest at all because of 
you know, the, the tickets and the 3 plus 1 discounts and everything like that, but uh, just knowing what we know about the anniversary that's coming up and the fact that, you know, like these two new units are not overly impressive, once again, in my opinion. Um, I think if you're free to play, I think that if you don't care too much about Pycon and Janemba, then you should probably skip these banners. If you do want Pycon and Janemba, or if you really want the Blue Fusions, for example, from the 5th anniversary, then do one round on each banner and then call it a day. You know, like just the first 3 plus 1, plus your free tickets. And uh, then after that, I think you should be done with these banners as well. Because, yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense right now to go too hard on this dual Dokkan Fest, considering what we know about the future. Um, that's just my opinion. That's my recommendation. Obviously, the whole point of going through everything is to help you guys decide for yourselves whether or not these banners and these units are worth it. So, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, regardless of my recommendation, what you plan to do with these banners, whether it's to skip completely, whether it's to, you know, do a few multis or do one round per banner and call it a day, or just go all out and try to rainbow both. Yo, whatever your decision, I respect it. It's your stones, it's your game. So do whatever makes you happy. But uh, if you wanted my advice, then there you go. I would caution people to go very easy on these banners and still save most of your stones for the upcoming anniversary. That's just how I feel. That is today's pass or pull video. Hopefully it helped some of you guys make that summoning decision. And uh, as always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.